mentioned. We are joined by the Admiral Maria Lawrenson and John Gilstrap. Thank you for joining us today. We we have to we got a full house today, so um, and, I appreciate and, it. And well done, Mike. You got John's introduction out of the way quite smooth. That time. I, well, he I, didn't put in the New York Times bestselling yeah, author part, right. but that's okay. You, you know, we say it so much. I mean, how many times do we have to promote that yeah. he writes a book and he's smarter? Well, there is a whole segment about me coming up, you know, so that'll work. Yeah. Bill uh, <laughs> drives a boat, and Maria owns. I'm sorry, what, county. What, what does he drive? A boat. A boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A boat. 40-horsepower boat. We had joined this segment by the uh, superintendent of Berkeley County Schools, Mr. Ron Stevens. Welcome, Ron. Good morning, Mike. Thank you for, for coming in. I appreciate it. Obviously, this is, uh, with recent news, that there's been a lot of things. This is a tough time to talk about and, and things to go over. But with, with North Middle having the issues that it, it's having, and obviously you can't talk about personnel and things like that. But what can you tell us that that your response has been uh, from? We, we've heard from the elected officials, but obviously you're the man that really is at the forefront of this. And what, what can you tell us is your your response from? from well, but, you know, first of all. Um, we heard early this month from the um, Department of Education, the West Virginia Department of Education, that there was a written report going to be presented to their uh, Board of Ed, and they were going to be issuing a state of emergency, uh, and that we were going to have to work with them uh, to develop an action plan. That action plan would uh, would be uh, approved by the board and uh, the state board, and then Berkeley County would be required to participate <clears throat> uh, um, and meet the meet all of the um, pieces of that action plan. I really don't know the details of what's going to be included in that action plan until um, you know until the, it's completed. Uh, I do anticipate they're working on it. Uh, I have been in touch with them. Um, you know, they, they've talked to me about a few things, but I, I, I just don't know what's going to make the plan and what's not. I do know that they're going to require us to hire a, uh, a school, um, I forget the term, transition the specialist transit, yeah. um, with our uh, CSI monies <clears throat> that are provided to the schools that are uh, on continuous school. And is that paid for by Berkeley County? Well, it's out of your yes, budget. Yes and no. Okay. It, it's money. Um, we do get a, an allotment of money from the state for CSI schools. So, um, with that money, we would be required to to do that other piece. What's a CSI school? Thank you. Uh, it is a continuous school for improvement. Um, it it is. Uh, those are schools that are designated by the state. Um, and in 2022, North was designated, and I I don't know the number throughout the state, um, but there was a, a significant number that were identified as CSI. There are actually two schools in, in Berkeley County, Winchester Avenue and North, that are CSI schools. And, you know, there's accountability systems. Um, there's always an accountability system. And <clears throat> going back through the last three accountability systems, you know, n North has shown to be a school, a challenging, a, a challenging school. And um, we have had um, state specialists uh, recommended and assigned um, by the state over the last three accountability systems. And, you know, if it hadn't been for the, the pandemic window, um, you know, there, there may have been a fourth in there as well so uh north is it's just a, a challenging area and um you know th there were a few things that were mentioned that i that i would like to state um some of some of the terminology that was uh, used while presenting to the state board um yeah i i, I felt like was Extremely hey, second. Can you, can yeah, you get into more specifics? Who presented? I'm yeah. sorry. The, the the department of the state department of education. Okay. Um, is involved with CSI schools around the state, and it was their observation and and, and their recommendation from the information that they had put together um, to recommend a, 
the state of emergency due to uh, safety at the at the school. Uh, that was their recommendation, um, and I, I do feel obligated to to uh, to say that this is, uh, you know, their survey that was um, um, our the CSI schools completed in the fall. It very closely matches the survey that uh, Berkeley County Schools does with all the schools that we did in the spring. Um, and students feeling safe in the school, uh, employees feeling safe in the school, parents' uh, views on school safety, all were, were issues that um, we, were, we were targeting throughout the year. So, Ron, I have a question. And, and a lot of parents have called me and asked me, this is when you look at the test scores from all the schools like the, mm -hmm. within Berkeley, um, the last um, category is discipline. And mm -hmm. it seemed like all our schools are green in discipline. Um, we have our issues in, with, with, with the other stuff. But why do what why does it show up that all schools are green in discipline? And then we find out about this with South or maybe you know other schools. What's the reasoning for we, that? We, we wonder that as well. Um, and when I say we, all of the, you know, within Berkeley County, but all across the state. Um, and I believe it comes down to um, a, a large piece of that is how it's documented. Are you following the rules um, to, to do all of that? Not necessarily the uh, um, actual results. Well, not the results, but the okay. actual behavior of okay. the students in, in there. If, or if if a student misbehaves and it is and it is dealt with uh, according to policy, um, you know that I think that weighs into it. I, I, I do believe people are looking at that, but um, well, I mean that's, that's was was it shocking to you that the school was put under state of emergency? Did did you know it was coming? Um, it, I was I was surprised that, that uh, state of state of emergency was uh, was the route that they were taking. Um, however, saying that, you know, the the timeline for North, um, as I said, it's been a challenging school, and it, it has been recognized over the last three accountability systems. Um, and any time um, the, the state is involved. You run the risk of, um, you know, having a bad day, having a bad week, having a bad semester, and um, I, I, I believe that this was one of those perfect storms. Um, and again, some some of the information that was provided, I, I think we're providing some clarification on. I I do want to go on record. I do not disagree that we need to take action at, at North uh, Middle School. I do not disagree that we need to to review this across every school in Berkeley County and every school in West Virginia, um, making sure that that we are coming up with effective ways to manage discipline and manage students. Um, and that is, a, that is a big ball to unwind, a ball of yarn to unwind. Um, but the timeline really, if, if you go back to 2007, 2008, that was the first, uh, well, not the first, but that was um, Upon me coming to, to Berkeley County 20 some years ago, um, North was designated as a um, closing the achievement gap school, which was the term for the accountability system back then. A few years later, it was um, identified as a low performing school, which was under uh, No Child Left Behind, which was the next accountability system. Um, we were headed in that direction prior to the pandemic, but then the pandemic hit and you couldn't get any data. So therefore, you know, things all across the state were reset. And what I was going to say about CSI schools to John earlier is that there are a number of CSI schools across the state because everybody got reset at the pandemic at the same time. So all of the schools across the state that needed help, it's, it's not like we've got a few this year and a few the next year. Everybody started at ground zero, and, and we had a large number to, to start things out with. So there are a number of CSI schools across the state. So, so Ron, t speak a little bit about we had board members on several <coughs> times, um, you know, generally upset because they said they didn't know. So are you saying right here, right now, that you were not aware of this? 
until the beginning of May. And so, and my question had been to them, well, what point does a board member have the responsibility to go looking? Um, but first and foremost, did you, when did you find out about this? Well, as I said, uh, North has been in this cycle for 17 years that I'm aware of. And the CSI designation came last year. And in the spring of 2023, uh, the initial reports from the initial visit from, from the State Department did say that they, they were concerned about um, the, uh, the discipline, um, uh, I can't, can't, the, the term is escaping me, but the uh, proper, um, taking the proper disciplinary measures with students and follow through at North. Um, so it, it, it was on the radar from the state in their reports uh, last year. Um, they met with, they recommended that the leadership of the school attend uh, some trainings in the summer. Um, they requested that a few, there were a few items that were requested for the, for the uh, leadership of the school, specifically the administration, the principal, um, to begin it, at the beginning of this school year. Um, so what about the people who say you should have just enveloped that school with just all the staffing, everything yeah. they need to, um, to pull them up from their bootstraps? I mean, I've heard that as I, well. I, I wish that it was that simple, Maria. I, I wish that we could do that. And I think the people 17 years ago when, when they were on a, an accountability system at that time wished the same thing. Um, so, f first of all, um, I, I do feel the need to, to clarify just a few things before I, I get into that. Um, you know, the, the, at the state board of education meeting, there were some comments made about Title IX, uh, incredible amount of Title IX cases that were at North Middle School, and I, I believe that there. Was, uh, explain for our, our, yeah. our listeners okay. Title so, IX, just uh, if, if you will. If, if, if there's an inequity. Um, based on um, based on sex, um, it, it it can trigger a Title IX investigation, okay. um, and it can be female to male, male to female, male to male, female to female, um, student to student, adult to student, adult to adult. Um, that can they that can trigger a uh, a Title IX investigation. Um, and throughout the past few years, uh, Berkeley County has been uh, working with the Office of Civil Rights to, to increase our um, Title IX training. And we're really attuned to, um, to all of that at the school level. Now, what that means is if someone has, um, is touched inappropriately, if someone um, is pantsed, you know, in a middle school where, where their pants are pulled down, if, um, if you know, it, what what some people would consider horseplay on a serious end, all the way up to uh, sexual misconduct. Any allegation like that can be investigated and must be investigated um, through a Title IX report. Now, they're not considered official Title IX cases uh, unless there's merit to it. So, for instance, I know of, of one case uh, where... Uh, two friends were were horsing around, and one was wearing sweatpants, and another one came up and pulled his pants down. Well, a, um, a a younger teacher did not know if that was had a sexual connotation to it or not, so it was written up as a as a Title IX report, which simply means it has to be looked at and and it has to be dismissed as not a Title IX occurrence. So, for clarification. Um, the terminology that was used at the State Board of Education, there were 20-some um, Title IX cases, which is a, a huge number of Title IX cases. That is, is an error. That is incorrect. There were that many investigations. There were that many reports turned in. Um, but for the year, there were only two Title IX cases. Um, again, two is too many. Um, those, those are cases that have merit and need to be uh, provided uh, services to, to both parties, and there's a whole variety of different things that have to happen there. But, um, and one of those actually took place after 
the, the state's visit. So there, at the time of their visit, there had only been one actual Title IX case. And I think, you know, they looked at the numbers of reports. And when you say that number, it really stunned all of the board members and everybody that was listening. And likewise, um, to say that there were 164 um, fights, um, there were referrals for fighting, physical touching, pushing, shoving, and all of that included in all of that. Um, and Mike, you and I could get in a fight, but that's just one fight. There's two referrals. Um, so I think the numbers were... Um, Escalated? Well, I, there's only they were, they were unintentionally. Were, they're, they're still too high. I'm, mm -hmm. not, I'm not trying to say that, but uh, they, they weren't at the, at the level that we were talking about. And if, and if you're walking the halls of, of uh, North Middle School, uh, as I've heard even one of our board members say recently at a board meeting, I've been walking the halls in that school and I have not seen the level that, they're, that they were referring to. Let, so. I, let me be, kind of shift the energy of this discussion a little bit. I, I've spent yeah. 35 years of my life investigating stuff that went really, really wrong. Um, that, that was my job. And after something like this happens, whether something blows up or if a system blows up, there's only so much energy that goes around and we can expend that energy trying to figure out who made the mistakes and whether or not the observations are true or if they've been overblown or whatever. Or we can invest that energy in making sure that the system is working the way it needs to be. We take what happened, whether it's inflated or not, irrespective of whose fingerprints are, are on, on the body, on, on the the, the things that went wrong and then take those as lessons and fix learning into the future and we turn our backs on the reasons we can't fix it we say okay the legislature is not going to give us locality pay okay fine that's what yeah that's that sucks but we have to fix the problem anyway so my question to you as superintendent mm -hmm. um though everybody works for you so this is your job now. It has always, you know, this is, this is the evidence that has fallen in your lap. So what is that plan? What is the process? I'm not suggesting you have, you know, there's a lot yeah. of moving parts to yeah, this, right? Sure. So what, what is your plan to develop the process that yeah. makes this, this happen? I mean, I'm, I got these, the numbers here, um, you know, we got 6% of seventh and eighth, or sixth and seventh graders performing at grade in math Correct. in in North Middle, but as bad as that is, you know, it's thirty percent of West Virginia's sixth graders are performing at a grade level. Mm -hmm. So it's not that hard a pull, I wouldn't think, with a little imagination, for a school to get to thirty-one percent. You know, you can kind of get when the state levels are so abysmal. It shouldn't be that big a pull to get Berkeley County to be a point or two above that. So it seems to me that if we set those kinds of lofty goals, that right. it's, it's not that hard to achieve. So I guess my question to you is, are you, are you leaning in that direction and are you, are you trying to process that? Uh, absolutely. <clears throat> and you are, you are spot on with what you're saying there. Um, you, you know, I, I feel like Berkeley County is putting out a, a, a superior product. Our students are outstanding. We, you know. Evidence to the contrary, <laughs> notwithstanding. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I think. Well, I think our students need to know that you know what this evidence is suggesting. Um, but additionally, um, we're close. I mean, we're, we're below the the state, but but we're close with those scores that you just talked about averaged in. Uh, and if you know how averages work. Um, if you if you're able to adjust that one score from an eight up, then the entire average goes up. Um, you know, so we are focusing on achievement. We are focusing on um, you know professional development across the county to, to raise that. But at North uh, Middle School specifically, things that we are doing, we we have um, maintained the lowest student teacher ratio. Uh, at, at our middle schools, um, 
you know, we feel it's a, it's appropriate to have smaller class sizes at North. Uh, so we made a conscious decision uh, over the last two years to make sure that it is still uh, staffed to, to, to be the, that way. Um, there was an additional administrative position added to North. Uh, they have a third uh, assistant principal that was added this year. <clears throat> but when you have these positions, you know, it's, it's a catch-22. What we have now at North is three brand new assistant principals. You know, two of them, this is their first year, one of them came in in the spring of last year as the most seasoned administrator that we have at that school. Um, additionally, there are so many vacancies in education, teachers can move to wherever that they want. Um, and it has been a challenge for the 17 years that I have referred to and the 22 years that I've been in Berkeley County, it has been a challenge to staff North Middle School and, and keep a consistent staff there. So those are things that we've got to look at. Um, you know, we, we have focused on the, the academics and I, and I believe that we're going to see an increase at North. I fully believe that. Is it gonna be a 15% a, a jump, John? I, I would doubt that it would be that much in the first year, but I think turning the large ship around to, to make positive steps Ron, is the first thing. Ron, how much is the that that test because obviously as a parent or as a legislator i can only look at the schools by test results mm -hmm. how can we make that test more important to the child um all throughout you know middle school high school as well as make it count towards the teacher uh, so so everybody's accountable for that test mike if i had that answer i would be <laughs> We'd all be better, right? Off. Yeah. Um, but you're you're right. We've got to make sure the, the first thing that that we have identified this year um, is we have got to make sure that the students know why they're taking the test and what what they have, what skin they have in the game. Um, but I go back to the fact that, for instance, you were looking at at math scores, I believe, John, and um, you know this is you know a school that had two certified math teachers mm. in the building. Um, the others were people that mean well, people that are good people, um, but they, they hadn't, don't have a math degree, don't have a math background, and many of them have come into education and don't have an education background. So they're, they're building the plane. We're building the plane while it's in the air. And, um, you know, it's, it's extremely challenging. And it, it, there's a high rate of burnout when you do that. So that's what we're trying to guard against. The first step this spring, um, we have a county administrator who is an on-site decision maker at North and she is, uh, is filling positions, um, trying to get, you know, those teachers in place early. Um, you know, this is, you know, another thing that I think we need to know is this is something that can be turned around. This is something that that with qualified staff every year at a middle school, you know, there's turnover. You know, you got so, a third of the so let's end, new let's, next year. let's end this segment on a positive note, Ron. Yeah, give, yeah. give me some positive. We got a minute before oh, we got to go to break. So, so yeah. give me some positive so people on listening or watching can understand that. North is not what we are. Let's look to the future. Well, first of all, North, North is part of what we are, and I feel really good about the direction that we're going. Okay. I'm looking forward to working with the state on an action plan and getting some support for our, our staff and students. So Fantastic. first and foremost, I don't think this is a death sentence by any means. I think this is, this is a way for us to put a focus on it and, and try to shine the apple a little bit uh, for North. Um, but it, this is the time of year that is my favorite time of year. We have graduations this week. We've completed three. We have uh, Hedgesville's graduation. The fourth uh, of Berkeley County is tonight. At the end of uh, um, the week, after tonight's graduation, we will have close to 1,500 graduates. Um, many of them went to North. We, we do have students um, who, have are successful and have, and have left and um, you know our, our high schools are, are thriving right now and growing 
Um, this is the graduating class that started with, during the pandemic. Uh, this is, you know, they started high school with, with masks on. They've had a, lo a lot of things to, to fight through. Um, and I give them a lot of credit. And, you know, my term for them is, um, you know, I don't know if you like the mo old movies, but uh, Josie Wales, uh, there was a scene in there said, I don't know how you've done this. And he said, well, um, one of the old Indian um, Indian guys that was that was with Josie Wales so said it was pers persevere, endeavor to persevere. That was what uh, the advice from Abe Lincoln to him was. So I think that's that's this class, endeavor to persevere. Thank you, Ron, for, for coming in. I uh, really appreciate it. This uh, portion of the show brought to you by Skinner Accident and Injury.